All right, guys. So anybody who is waiting to hear from Thriving in Place, uh, we are going to continue to work on getting them to come to a meeting, but it didn't work out again tonight. So I'm sorry. So this should be pretty quick, I think. Um, let's see. We're going to go right to, we have a new trustee joining us tonight. He's from the Fairmont. Let's see. I think he's from the, I looked it up today, the Fairmont. He'll be a Fairmont trustee. He's from Minnesota. Um, David, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everybody. I'm David Alkire, and my wife, uh, Joanne, and I live on McClellan by Fairmont Park uh, and right on Parley's, the amazing Parley's Trail, which is fantastic. Uh, my wife works, Joanne works for uh, Merritt Medical, and I retired a few years ago. So we're just kind of still in transition here, but I was just so delighted to have the opportunity to get involved with the community with the Sugar House Community Council. David lives in the new Dixon building. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, it, is, it is nice. <laughs> well, thank you. So let's, I make a motion to approve him. Does anybody? I second that. David's I... been on my land use committee for the last four or five months, and he's great to have. Awesome. Any, nice anybody? Yeah, everybody approve. We'll just go with show of hands. Thanks, Aye. guys. Okay. Congrats, Dave. This is a big deal to be a volunteer. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, Shane doesn't have anything tonight, so we're just going to go to Mike Bagley with the Treasury Report. Hi, guys. Um, it should be pretty simple. So just logged in, checked the uh, U.S. bank account, $7,009.70. Really no activity going on over there. Um, just their balance stick sticking the same. And then over at the PayPal, our balance is $577.27. And all that, all that is for the, uh, the money that's being solicited for the um, glass recycling bin project that the arts and culture and the Fairmont, um, Fairmont Park folks are, are coordinating. And so we're going to make sure that money gets where it's supposed to go. And I just want to remind people if you are considering a donation through the through the PayPal link on our website. Um, if you want to specify that those funds are for that project, just put something in the notes so that I can identify it, like um, glass recycling project, something like that. And then I'll make sure that the, all those funds go exactly where you want them to go. Great, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Hey, Scott, do you have a second to talk? I don't know if Scott's quite on yet, but um, we're gonna have Scott Little from Tuzante talk in just a minute, um, as soon as he's able. Hey, Scott. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Great, thanks. Good. You wanna talk about what's going on? <laughs> don't need to tee it up. How do you? No, oh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah, no, thanks. Uh, I guess basic, yeah, I mean, this, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I own T's Auntie. We're the little tea and wine cafe right across the street from the post office in Sugar House. Um, and, you know, for the last for the last year and a half, we've been uh, hosting kind of monthly drag shows at, at the shop. They're just, you know, they're all ages. They're a blast. Um, our August event was, yeah, it was outside, really, like on our patio. It was, it was a great event. Um, after the event, we... Uh, Posted posted some video of um, a you know neighborhood uh, family and the daughter kind of dancing uh, with the um, with the drag queens and uh, it was a great super wholesome video. On um, this past weekend, it was picked up by a uh, I don't know for lack of a better word I guess a hate group, and they started uh, targeting us uh, pretty pretty severely. It was. Uh, some real kind of personal attacks on on myself, the business, uh, the 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 girls' parents, um, and obviously the, the drag queens. Uh, so it was you know it was a tough two or three days for the shop. Um, you know we, uh, you know our staff was say staff was super unnerved. Um, you know fortunately I think all of the um, you know all the people that were. Kind of attacking us via uh, 
social media via whatever uh, reviews and everything like that. I think 95% of them were outside of the state of Utah. Um, so, so I mean, that's kind of ultimately, I guess, good for, for us. Uh, but, but I mean, it was just, it was just super unnerving for us. And, and honestly, uh, you know, really good learning opportunity, I think for, especially for myself, who I think has been pretty lucky in life and, and not been kind of subject to, to this type of um, attack and, and they say really opened up our eyes. Um, but, you know, on the flip side of that, we kind of, uh, you know, we kind of told our story um, via kind of email and, and uh, we actually, we talked to the Trib today and talk to the Salt Lake City Police, like we call the non-emergency line, just to just to give them a heads up. I mean, you know, God forbid anything happened at, at the shop itself. We just wanted the police department to be kind of uh, aware. But uh, we, we sent out we sent out a message to, to our our database and stuff, and and the community has just been awesome. Like we've had just two great days, and uh, it's it's you know just kind of heartwarming to see like you know. People are in the shop. They they kind of pull me aside and be like, "Scott, we're so sorry that you know to hear this happen, but you know we love what you're doing here. We we're so happy that you're part of the community and everything." So, you know, I say I think there's a flip side, obviously, but but it's it's scary to 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 see. And and I mean these these attacks were 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 pretty pretty harsh um, to to say the least. And and uh, yeah, just knowing that yeah our simple little shop can can get targeted like that from a national international group like this is, is kind of scary so if you could review tizante and help the reviews uh that would be great on all so social media platforms right scott yeah no that'd be, that'd be that's great and and i mean just support everybody i mean that's the thing right it's like you know we have such a great community and and we, we just got to do everything that we can can to kind of send a positive message and that that's that's what i think is, is huge well said man however we can help you thanks thank you brandon i'm going to turn the time over to you cool i'm going to ask erica and and derek as well to to join but um as hopefully everybody on this zoom knows we are having the Sugar House Chamber's first Oktoberfest um, this Sunday at the Neighborhood Hive uh, from 1 to 5 p.m. Um, Eric and I are going to talk a little bit about um, some of the ways that you can help the Chamber. Um, and then we're going to let Derek talk about some of the vendors that are going to be there, kind of what's going on day of. Um, Erica, do you have our cool mug? Well, I do not have it right here, unfortunately, in hand, but um, we have fantastic mugs that are real glass. They have a lot of weight to them, um, feel good in the hand, and they have the Sugar House Chamber Oktoberfest logo on the front. They, uh, they are available to be pre-ordered for $12, or day of, you can buy one at the event for $15. And keep in mind that the all the profits from the the mug sales will directly go back into the chamber and helping local businesses. So we really ask that everyone jump in and reserve your mug now. We you can pay via Venmo, just message myself or Brandon, and we'll circle back with you to collect payment and we'll have your name on it when you stop by to come hang out and listen to music, eat food, and drink beer. Derek, do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, venue itself? Uh, yeah, of course, most people are familiar with the Neighborhood Hive, and I apologize, my camera apparently has died, so I'll get a new one for the next meeting. But uh, we have over 20 vendors lined up, everybody from jewelry makers, woodworkers, quilters, artists, lots of sweets, and uh, we've got some food trucks lined up. Two of them are vegan, two of them are not vegan. And uh, one of the food vendors is doing bratwurst and pretzel buns. So we're pretty excited for that. Um, I definitely would like to thank Dana, our chamber secretary for her hustling. So this is a pretty big event and we're super excited. 
Uh, it is family friendly and there's no admission. So walk, bike, push your strollers and come up to the neighborhood hive and check out Oktoberfest. Yeah, and we're gonna have some awesome um, chamber businesses there representing. We've got um, Patagonia um, outlet. We've got the bar method. I see Christine on. Um, we've got pups. Um, Sonia's on. Um, we've got mindful living. Um, so we're, we're super stoked to have those folks representing the local community, but obviously we want to keep it a, you know, a larger community inclusive event as well. Um, but if you are a, a, a business in the area and a chamber member, reach out. Uh, we do have a, a spot or two available if uh, you're interested. And there will be some mocktails there as well. And I see Dana has her hand up. If uh, we could let her unmute. She can unmute herself. Hi, yeah. everybody. <laughs> uh yes please come down uh we could use a few volunteers um you know you guys are awesome you should come and volunteer it's gonna be really fun we have dj naomi from one to three and then the seven street strangers playing from three to five they're the band that played on monument plaza when we did um the thing in conjunction with the art walk a few months ago or the i guess the spring flank the pub crawl um so that should be really fun derek's got some great stuff going on inside the neighborhood hive as well uh, Jen and Derek have been great to work with. Bring your photo ID. You have to have photo ID to get a wristband to drink um, and just to manage expectations a little bit. Please buy those beautiful glass mugs. Unfortunately, we won't be able to pour beer in them at the event, but they will be great for you for the rest of the year to pour very large beers in at home in a safe environment. They are <laughs> huge. That is part of the problem. We didn't know how big they would be. Um, <laughs> they're, they're a real 32 ounce beer site. They're awesome. Um, and they'll be great. Um, they're Landon sized. <laughs> yeah. I have been asking, you'd better be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we definitely uh, reiterate, we need volunteers. Yeah. So, just a I few. Um, so let me know. I'm, I'll put the link to the, um, to the event in the chat and then I will put my email in there. Um, and if not, Landon's in charge of corralling you to come in to volunteer. <laughs> Well, and, and Dana, I'd like to I'd like to put a special challenge out. If you're a, if you're a yeah. current community council trustee, um, we'd really like to see you there and supporting us. So um, if I don't see anyone there, there's going to be hell to pay. Yeah. <laughs> you must come drink beer, listen to music, enjoy good food, and have revelry. And it'll only be in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, not only nineties. <laughs> Dana, there's a question of volunteers. Kind of to do what? You want to talk? Uh, to I basically about need? just need a couple of volunteers. We'll probably split it into two shifts. I just need folks to be at the entrance and exit to ensure that no alcohol is leaving the premises. That's pretty much the job is just to make sure that nobody's walking out the, the barricades and the gates with any alcohol. So, you know, you can talk to people and chit chat and if you're into that kind of thing and just make sure they don't take their beer off the site so we don't get the DABC police to shut us down and never let us do this again. Do the, vol do the volunteers get a free mug? Uh, sure. That <laughs> okay. You gotta have something. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Awesome. Anything else guys? Nope. I should do it right now. Okay. Thank you. See you Sunday. See everybody on Sunday. Jared, do you want to just unmute yourself? So we have the principal of Highland High here tonight. <clears throat> He's going to talk about a meeting they're having tomorrow. Yeah, sorry about that. Just needed to <laughs> step out real quick. So yeah, well, tomorrow evening, seven o'clock uh, morning, we're going to do a fees of study uh, to see about building a new Highland High School. It's really step one uh, of if this is something that should start going forward. Uh, our district has hired uh, architects for both a uh, feasibility study for Highland and for West High School. And uh, really, we're just excited to get uh, community input, uh, what you're looking for in a high school. And we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to have their voices heard. So if you're interested in coming uh, tomorrow from seven to eight o'clock, it should only be an hour, uh, just kind of the step one introductory meeting of what we're looking for for a feasibility. Jerry Highland, Highland Auditorium? Yes, Highland Auditorium. Seven to 8 p.m. Yep. Okay.
So yeah, should, uh, if you have young kids, uh, if you have kids at Highland right, right now, or even Hillside or, or any younger kids uh, in feeder schools, great opportunity. We're hoping potentially if everything goes as planned, uh, we, if, if a bond is put forth and voted on and approved, uh, we're hoping to be able to put a bond out for uh, next November's election, not this coming, but the year after. Uh, and then if that's approved, potentially be able to break ground within uh, the six months of that and uh, probably 18 months to two years, potentially have a new building. So really exciting news. You guys should all walk the halls down there. You'll, you'll know it's really needed. Yeah, you're all welcome. I'll give you a tour. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. Thank you. All right. All right, Detective Fallows, you ready? Absolutely. Good to be here with you guys tonight. Um, just while I'm giving a presentation, if anybody has any questions for me specifically, uh, you can put them in the chat um, and or at the end, feel free to ask me any questions. Um, I'm going to put a couple of helpful links and some information in the chat for everyone that is uh, can kind of help guide you to some of the things you might have questions to. Um, and then before we get into the statistics for the for the last month, um, I'll, I wanted to touch real quick on, I'm trying to do this with all my community councils. If you're a business owner and or a, um, a private residence as well, you can do this. Um, Salt Lake City offers a no trespass affidavit program where you fill out a no trespass affidavit, uh, you get it um, notarized, you bring it into the police department, and then um, you can uh, get some no trespass signs that are issued by the city. And those allow us as the police department to respond to your business um, or home. And if you're not there, uh, we're able to take action without um, you having to be there. So if there's someone on your property that you don't want there, um, you know, maybe someone camping or someone trespassing who, who you don't want, you can call us, we can come and remove them and arrest them without you having to be there. So just wanted to touch on that. There's a link at the top um, that kind of tells you how to do that. Uh, and then also our SLC mobile app. I uh, just want to touch on that real quick. Um, so the SLC mobile app is helpful to report different types of things. You can report concerns regarding homelessness, which would be like camps, um, or even if it's just there's someone you're concerned about that you want to get resources to. Uh, it works both ways um, that, that may be experiencing homelessness. Um, and you can also report like speeding issues in your neighborhood, sign down, signs that may be down, um, lots of different things with the SLC mobile app. Just as a reminder to everybody, um, it does not take place of a police report. So if you still need a police response or you want a police response, um, please still call our, either our emergency dispatch or, um, of course, 911 if it's an emergency. Um, and then, yeah, let's just go over the the stats for the month. Um, I was able to get July's and August this time. So we'll kind of just touch on both those. Um, July was a busy month. We had 349 total um, reported crimes. These are part one and part two crimes. Um, again, you can go on our website and you can kind of see more about like what exactly those crimes are, but essentially um, it's just any crimes that's occurring in Salt Lake City are reported on. Uh, the, the top ones that we see, especially a lot in, um, in Sugar House, are larceny and theft related. Um, and then, of course, with that usually comes fraudulent type crimes. And so what we're seeing is like people are maybe going into the store for a second, leaving their purse or wallet or something of value in the vehicle. And then people are breaking into the vehicles, doing smash and grabs, and then taking their credit cards and going and spending, uh, trying to use them immediately. So just a good reminder, make sure that we're taking... Um, you know, the valuables out of our vehicles. If you're running into the store, even just for a second, try and throw anything valuable in the trunk so that it's not just out in the open for people to see. And and because uh, a lot of these crimes are crimes of opportunity. And so it's just someone walking by, they notice, oh, hey, look at that, you know, something to take and, and they do so. Um, and then we're also seeing kind of some vandalisms that are, the vandalisms actually went Let's see, that's the only one that went up a little bit from July to August. In August, we only had 277 total reported crimes. So 72 uh, less crimes reported in August, which is good. Um, generally, that's kind of what happens in the city. Things start to trend down. Um, it's been super warm out still, but as it starts to get a little bit cooler and colder, hopefully we see those numbers continue to drop. Um, 
but essentially, um, those are some of the, the major issues we see when it comes to the reported crimes. So Ben asked, what's going on with the RVs parked on Sugar Mountain? How is SLCP addressing the issue? So um, if you're seeing RVs parked on there, if you all would do me a huge favor and shoot me an email or a text or something, or a, a call me, excuse me, and just, or let Landon know, and he can tell me as well, which, which he does all the time. And I appreciate that a lot. Um, let me know because we have specific meetings and the way we mitigate those issues or, or help uh, to try and address them is we have meetings every, every month that include Salt Lake City Partners, which includes the, um, our, our compliance. They're the ones that go out and impound vehicles that are parked illegally, things like that. So we have this meeting. If there's an address that has a lot of RVs that are starting to come in, things like that, we can get it taken care of. Um, and I also can work with our, um, our overtime camp mitigation officers and the sergeant who's over them to come out and help also deal with that issue. So we had a pretty big problem with that at uh, Fairmont Park before. So if that's starting to become an issue again, let me know. And uh, it sounds like it is already. So I'll bring that up tomorrow. That's a, I had that meeting every Thursday. So um, that's generally what we try to do to, to help deal with that problem. Was there any other questions or that's a good question or did I answer your question there? Hopefully Ben. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Warm up. So we brought one up way too long and it was so high up. All right. Well, thanks, Sam. Absolutely. Um, if you guys want to look at our stats as well or figure out things going on in the city, um, I put the link for that as well to the to our stat website that you can kind of play around and and try that out. But if you got but but don't hesitate to reach out to me or Landon and and I'll see what I can do to help you. Yeah, thanks for everything. You're always very responsive, so thank you. Absolutely. Um, let's go to Samantha Finch. Are you ready to talk? Can anybody hear me? Yeah, you're good. You're gonna have to describe what the peanut board is, but go oh, ahead. Hi. Hi folks, I'm a resident here in District 7, so I hang out and watch you guys sometimes on Sugar House Community Council Channel TV every once in a while in the dark, um, pay attention. Uh, but um, more importantly, I just play a small role in your community. I sit on the peanut board. Uh, I am your local friendly peanut. Peanut stands for uh, Parks, Natural Lands, Urban Forestry and Trails Advisory Board. It's a citizen advisory board here in Salt Lake City. So I get to meet with, with great folks and hang out with like people like Sarah Wolseley, of Friends of Fairmont, and Sally B, who runs your post subcommittee on parks, open spaces, and trails, uh, as well as the new uh, newly anointed chair, I believe, Pat of at Friends of Allen Park, um, and try to convey some information about what the Parks and Public Lands Department is doing to them and help uh, raise and emphasize uh, their concerns to back to the Parks Department. Anyway, uh, I was invited just to speak for a few moments on an email that I shared with Lennon, which is to make everyone uh, aware of a GO bond that will be appearing on your ballot this November. GO bond stands for General Obligation Bond. Um, it was just approved by the Salt Lake City Council last month, actually August 16th. I have a lovely website that I couldn't share with you. I'll put, I'll put the website in the chat. But that's sort of the website that has the most information right now. Uh, the purpose of the GO Bond is to benefit our parks and public spaces. Uh, it's an 85 million GO Bond with a life of uh, 20 years. It's going to be a property tax. Uh, so it will be before Salt Lake City residents to be approved this November uh, on the ballot. Um, let me go ahead and put that in. But if you take a look at this website, it lists specific projects that are going to be funded. And in particular, District 7 will be, uh, is favorably impacted. In particular, there's two parks, Fairmont and Allen Park, uh, that uh, are going to receive some money in this um, bond if approved by Salt Lake City voters, as well as it's going to be a part of major funding for the redesign 
and the, uh, of the Raging Waters Glendale Regional Park. So um, there it is there. Take a peek at that. If you have any questions, I encourage you all to dive into this information. The Parks Department themselves will be releasing their own website to help advertise and educate the public about this ballot initiative that's going to be appearing on your ballots this November. Um, and I will provide that link to uh, Landon and anybody else who wants to know when that information is rolled out. But right now, this is the primary website I would encourage you all to look at. There's a key date in there, which is, uh, I believe it's October 11th. I'm not looking at it right now. In which the Salt Lake City Council will be collecting arguments for and against this go bond. Um, and that's to be publicized along with uh, to help educate uh, Salt Lake City voters on whether or not to support or not uh, this ballot initiative. I encourage you all to read through it. Um, if you have additional questions, uh, you're welcome to read out to me. But I also encourage you to come to the post committee uh, that's run by Sally B. She's here on the call, but that's part of a subcommittee of Sugar House Community Council. And she's having, I hope, a meeting next Monday. And I'll be there to answer any questions, um, additional questions that I can about this ballot measure. Um, anything else? No. Um, the only other thing I would share with you is I know Landon also asked me to bring up anything about the park rangers. If you're not familiar with the park rangers, they should be moving around now and out and operational, it's my understanding. Uh, and I will also provide another website that links to a wonderful YouTube video that was put out by Salt Lake City Television that has introduces you to the park rangers and has them individually introducing themselves and talking about their mission and what they plan to do. So if people have further questions about who are the park rangers, where should I see them, who are what their mission is, um, take a look at this YouTube video and I'm also happy to answer questions. And I don't want to take too much time, but let me go ahead and plop this in the chat. Does anybody have any questions for her? So the first one is uh, public hearings go on. Okay, that with Tim. Tim's in there. Okay, Tim. Tim's all over Tim it. Cos yeah, Tim Cosco can further yeah, answer any questions I don't have. But be aware if you value parks and public lands, this uh, go bond is very valuable and the incremental costs to property tax owners uh, is in my mind or my judgment well worth it. I think uh, they give a, a, a typical, like a, an example of there, if you have a home of a, of a house that's worth valued over approximately 584 thousand K that your increase in property taxes, annual increase in property tax would be about $54 a year. So big investment for our parks and public lands here in Salt Lake City. And that's it. I'll stop talking now. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Bill Knowles, you ready? Yes, I am. We'll get through this fairly quickly because it's coming into the slowdown season. Um, I still have to say one more time, if nobody knows the Sugarmont apartments are done. Can I hear from the Sugarmont apartment? One more time. Yay. <laughs> Not on my list anymore, but my God, they're still in my heart. So yeah, we're done there. Uh, Sugar Alley, uh, we got some roadway back. Finally, uh, there's been, uh, yeah, some bouncing back and forth internally and with the contractor there, but we finally did get uh, back into a semi-normal uh, roadway in front of that project on Highland Drive. And uh, however, the pedestrian walkway will not be coming back as I earlier stated here a couple of months ago. Turns out they're running out of time and, and long story short is for them to get this done and get it done reasonably on time. They're not putting that back in. Our um, compromise with that is the fact that we have the new Judy Short Hawk Light there at just north of that, fully functioning and doing a great job of taking traffic back and forth across the street there. So we didn't put up a big stink about that and we just want them to get done and move on. And uh, so they're well on their way to doing that. Um, and the uh, Izzy project to the west of us there on between uh, 6th and 5th, 5th uh, and 6th East, are going crazy. I can't imagine how fast that place is going up. But uh, they 
did finally uh, start the installation of utility connections and took that one westbound lane between 5th and 6th on, on 21st. Uh, they'll have that probably for about another four weeks and will be completed once uh, they get their utilities installed into the site. Uh, by all likelihood, they'll hop across the street and, and take that eastbound lane down also, but I haven't seen a timing on that. But that project is moving very quickly after being uh, delayed and kind of stalled off for quite a while. They're making up for lost time. Uh, the 21st, uh, 21's, excuse me, 21's project, uh, I'm going to give them a little shout out here. They, they got their sidewalks in place uh, and, and they had to work some overtime <laughs> Uh, a weekend and in the rain, uh, the guy was informing me of all of this because I called to thank, say thank you. I was continually on his back the last uh, couple of months, July and August, and making sure that that sidewalk, uh, both on the uh, uh, 21st South and 21st East side would be passable for people, kids primarily going to school. He assured me it would be, and uh, he made the deadline by about uh, a minute and a half. So uh, we were very happy. I was happy to see it and called to congratulate him and he informed me that it was not without a little bit of extra effort. So give him a tip of the hat next time you see somebody over there. Um, Alta Terra project uh, is moving along now. They've been working on the foundations and kind of doing a lot of stirring up. And I say that because it wasn't moving very quickly in my uh, experience of seeing these things once they start. So they were actually having some uh, holdups uh, within the city uh, review on the last uh, iteration of designs. That has been cleared up and it is now moving forward. So after kind of stirring the pot around there for the last month or so, they'll actually start seeing some real action and stuff going vertical, I think, within a very short time. We still have, uh, and I also will mention, we, we have some good discussions uh, I think Lynn is on the call here. Lynn was part of this. Uh, but in some of the internal meetings we had, we discovered that their water line installations were going to have uh, maybe a, a negative impact or were going to be impacted by the future streetcar project uh, extension that we still hope to see here in the next year or so. And uh, with all of the conversations we've had uh, internally on that subject, some meetings were held in the last week or so that resolved all that and in fact made some change of plans necessary. So I'm proud to say that some of our internal meetings on talking amongst ourselves actually works out very frequently into good outcomes. And in this case, you'll never see it or know about it, but uh, the owners of the project of the Alta Terra project will, as will UTA when they go to build that, uh, that uh, streetcar line. So Lynn, you're on the call and thank you for your uh, obviously moving up that, that idea through the whole system there. Um, let's see, we got the Sugarmont project. If anybody more asked me about this, I cannot find out what and when is happening. We don't know. So that is the one at the Sugarmont 9th East where the track station or the, excuse me, streetcar line is down there. It's uh, been cleared off for nearly a year now and ready to go. And yet we, they don't actually have to apply for any variances. So there's not like they have to get anything through council or the or the, um, or the uh, planning commission, but there's been no plans submitted. There's been no uh, work permits asked for. So I don't have an answer for that. For everybody on here that asked me about that, I don't have an answer for that yet. The hey, Bill, that's the old that's the old cyclery, right? The Fisher cycle. That? Yes, the it is the old Fisher. Cycle. Yeah, okay. the old Fisher cycle. Yeah, all of that. The old mechanic shop. So. Uh, the minute, and the minute I get that, I'll send that out to at least a dozen people that ask me about it frequently. Um, it's going to happen, I guess, but just when we don't exactly know yet. Uh, by contrast, the uh, project that went along pretty quickly once it got out of the starting gate down on 7th East and Simpson, a uh, former art studio building down there, is, is underway. Uh, they had the demolition, uh, went right from demolition into uh, digging deep and starting foundation work. They are fully underway. And uh, from what we know, it's, it's going to be a 60 plus units residential. Uh, it'll be, uh, I think, going to be something that 
it is ideal for that neighborhood uh, and, and certainly full use the track, or again tracks, the light rail station right across the street. And I got, uh, oh, 21st South Sewer Line project. Not this year, not gonna happen. So they're putting that out for rebid uh, in about a month. And uh, the re obviously they're hoping to get more than one bidder as they got last time. And ideally for a much better price. And that will, if in fact happens, uh, they will not be able to schedule that until spring. They do intend to, one of the major parts of that was going to be at the 21st South 11th East Island Drive intersection. Big utility connections all through there that it was going to be a major part of that sewer project. So whether and winter they do start the rest of that project, they are going to tie that intersection work in with Wynn's project. Hope I'm not stealing any thunder here. I'm not right. No, you're, no. Okay. Uh, so coming up, we'll be giving you a report on the Highland Drive project. That sewer line installation at that point will be connected to Lynn's project. Um, that I think is all I have got. If there's any questions, please tell me. I do have one message for Scott, and I'm uh, about 30 seconds on a soapbox here. And I will say I've been through enough of these and certainly back when I became of age in the 60s. And I will tell you that love wins. Okay, that's it. Hey, Bill, Lori has a <clears throat> question. The one way road next to Buffalo Wild Wings, is it still going to be for pedestrians? Um, what was She's that heard some I conflicting reports. Uh, the one way the, the road between uh sugar house or the the sugar alley and the buffalo wild wings bill yeah that's going to be a one lane uh, it will be pedestrian but it'll be one lane westbound and of traffic one way of, of one way westbound of and, vehicle uh, traffic yeah will, the vehicle traffic there. there will be pedestrian there won't be the pedestrian walkway and everything that we originally had envisioned with uh, that project uh well that became property issues and that's somebody else's business but the fact is there will be a a uh, traffic through one-way traffic through there and pedestrian access that's all i know for now all right thanks bill you need to get some lights in your room let's go to, how about tim cosgrove tim you ready Hi, Landon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sugar House. Nice to be with you. Um, I really appreciate Samantha Finch for her update. <laughs> she is so smart. I, I can't do a better job. Um, thank you for sharing that information on the geo bond and the park rangers. There were just maybe two other things I also wanted to share that September 1st, we opened up the CIP applications, the capital improvement program. So this is up until September 30th. This is the application that everybody waits for. Um, this is for the next fiscal years, beginning 2023 to 2024. So we're always backing, backing up the available funding for that fiscal year for when we can do these projects. Uh, these are community projects. You can apply for it as a constituent, um, as a community council, as a group of community councils that come together, but it's putting things together like um, the Kensington Street byway, uh, but sidewalks, parks, it helps with community projects for public property. That's the key. It's got to support uh, public use and public, public property. These began at 50,000 and goes to a half a million dollars, um, $500,000. The community application has to be filled out in its entirety. There's two upcoming workshops to assist people with that at the Sorensen Unity Center on September 15th and 22nd. And I'll, I'll put that link in. Um, as well as what the expectation for the capital improvement projects will be required. 
Uh, there also, we had a new grant that just came ab available this year through our economic development department. It's the community grant program. Uh, this was funding that the President Biden administration um, was able to get Congress, was able to get through um, Congress, but it's the American Recovery Rescue Plan. And this is one time financial assistance to eligible businesses, uh, uh, nonprofits, uh, small businesses, individual businesses. It's to help those businesses that were adversely negatively impacted by COVID. And so they just have to show the hit that they faced during that time the expectations are listed in there. So it really helps spell it out. Our, we also have two people, uh, Kathy Rigby and Todd Anderson in economic development that will help you walk through that process if that's something that you're um, eligible for. And I'll put that link in the, pro, in the uh, chat as well. Um, those were the two main things. Um, I know there's quite a few things coming up. There's a movie, a film tomorrow night, Thursday, at the Salt Lake City Library on the five-year housing affordable affordable housing plan, the five-year affordable housing plan. Um, that's at six o'clock, six six thirty, six. 6.30, but it's tomorrow night at the library. You can park down in the underground parking. Uh, I've given validations for that, but if you want to participate and learn more about the housing crisis um, and what the city's doing for that, come join us. Uh, let's see, the Avenue Street Fair is this Saturday. The, there's a car show, a classic car show at the Bees Baseball parking lot next Friday, and then the 9th and 9th Street Festival um, next Saturday. I think I tried to cover the most highlight updates. Any questions? <laughs> thanks, Tim. You do a great job. OK, thanks, Landon. How'd you got to do with this tennis? Good. She won tonight. They beat Bingham. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Anytime you can meet those South Valley folks. Yeah. Good job. Uh, let's go to Sarah Woosley. Hey, thanks, Tim. Oh, and I got to follow up with Sarah, too. I haven't forgotten Sarah, but <laughs> I'll follow up. <laughs> I will not let you forget, Tim. <laughs> thank you. Well, Please, thank, you. thank you for your work and your leadership. I really appreciate it. But I haven't forgotten. <laughs> no, not at all. There's nothing to forget. Um, uh, so Sarah Wilde, Friends of Fairmont, I just wanted to, um, uh, Sally's not here with the post update, but I wanted to invite anybody here uh, to spread the word or attend. We're having a Friends of Fairmont. We have twice a year meetings that uh, bring together some of the park leadership and members. Uh, we're going to meet the park rangers. We're going to honor one of the staff. So should be a good meeting September 19th, six o'clock at the pavilion near the aquatic center. Um, we'd love to have anybody interested in the goings on at Fairmont Park to come and um, attend. And uh, in the realm of Fairmont, we are also continuing to raise money for our matching funds to have our recycling bin painted in partnership with Momentum we presented last time. We've raised, I think, about 700 some dollars. Want to keep going. So if you haven't yet donated, um, you can donate, like Mike said, through the Sugar House Community Council um, and or reach out to me and I'll make sure your donation is counted. Even five bucks makes a difference. Uh, we're matching funds to paint our bin with a beautiful um, mural that Lori Bray is going to help us find an artist for. So again, thank you, Landon, for the time and thanks for everybody who supports uh, Fairmont Park. Thank you. And you do a great job. So thank you. All right, Lynn, you ready? You bet, sir. Okay. Brandon, can you let me share screen? <clears throat> Maybe.
just waiting for Brandon to give me permission here. I just wanted to show a couple of uh, slides to make life easier. To start. <clears throat> okay, we're good. Hopefully <laughs> you can see. Can you see my PowerPoint? Hey, thank you for spelling sugar house with two words. Absolutely. I know better. <laughs> um, just wanted to give everyone an update on all of our road construction projects that are coming up over the next two or three years. There's a lot going on and it's a lot to keep track of. Um, and so just to uh, make sure everyone knows what we're up to and where we're at in our schedule. Um, it's been a long, long, several, I think we're about three years into the planning of these projects. And so there's a lot going on. I put together a kind of a major roadways list, but there's a lot of other smaller projects that are happening. Um, and then there's public utility projects and private property projects that aren't on this list. This is just the big roadway list. So starting off uh, next early next year, we're gonna actually do the McClellan Street project that we've all been waiting for. That was scheduled for this year, but got delayed. And we didn't want the contractor to start and not finish and have a mess all winter. And so that got punted to next year. Um, and it'll be the very, very first part of next year that that gets done. Uh, the next project that'll come up in sequence is the 11th East and Highland Drive project. That's scheduled for 2023 to 2024. Uh, we now are fairly certain that's gonna take a two construction year cycle to get done. Um, and then 13th East will start in 2024, as will 2100 South. So for those of you who are paying attention, 2024 is going to be a lot of moving uh, targets out there in terms of getting all these projects started and going. Um, just a couple highlights. Uh, I'll put these links in the chat when I'm done. But the McClellan Street project is coming in and it's doing an initial phase of what the overall vision for that roadway is. So it's not doing everything that we would love to do on McClellan Street, but it's a good start. And it includes landscaping, trees, art, signage, some more outdoor dining. Um, it'll narrow the roadway up to slow speeds and more crosswalks for people to go uh, across McClellan Street. The limits of this is from 2100 South down to Sugarmont. So essentially from the plaza down to where the, the streetcar station is. Um, and really the, the view is that someday that becomes a very walkable friendly uh, roadway where automobiles can be, but it's really pedestrian focused. So as I said, that'll be next spring that that goes to construction. Um, our 11th East Highland Drive will also start next spring. And the limits of that is actually from I-80 to 1700 South. And then we have a separate project that will go from 1700 South all the way up to 900 South. So by the time we're all said and done, all the way from 900 South to I-80 will be brand new roadway. Um, with all sorts of new sidewalk and curb and gutter and shared use path and bike lanes and other enhancements that we're making. So for the southern portion of the project, we're actually very near to completion on our design. Um, our draft final design will be done this Friday or maybe Monday, and we'll be reviewing that internally. Uh, the plan is that we put it out for a contractor to bid on in November, and then that goes to construction as soon as they can start working in the spring. Um, the website's highlandslc.org. I'll uh, add that to the chat when I'm done talking. Um, the 13th East project, again, this one starts in 2024. The boundaries of this is from the city boundary with Mill Creek uh, all the way to 2100 South. So a few years ago, we did north of 2100 South on 13th East. Now we're coming back and doing the rest of 1300 East to the South. So our concept is now complete. Uh, we, we've, we've presented that. We had an open house this summer. We're nearing completion of our environmental study and environmental document. And our next step will be final design, which will start probably early next year for construction the following year. Um, again, our website's there. I'll add the link. Grab some screen captures just to highlight what we're doing out here. Um, 13th East Highland Drive is kind of a, a big, crazy intersection. And it's really important to, to a lot of people. We're actually going to turn this into a bike protected intersection when we're done. So um, big improvements coming for that intersection. There will be new shared use path on the east side of the roadway that connects up to Sugar House Park. So all the people that currently live kind of in the Highland Park neighborhood and in the, that whole area um, will now be able to get onto that shared use path and actually have a very comfortable way to get all the way to Sugar House Park. So we're, we're really excited about that. From there, you can get on the Parley's Trail and go anywhere. So um, it really opens up a lot of opportunities for people that live south of I-80. Um, mm -hmm. The next project is our 2100 South project. And honestly, this has been kind of the big 
unknown. We don't really know what we're going to do with this roadway when we rebuild it. It will start in 2024, which means that we are working diligently night and day right now on coming up with what that concept is going to look like. Um, we had a really good survey response. Uh, we had a survey out there for about a month. That survey had over 3,000 responses, which I think is the most I've had since I started at the city in terms of the, the response rate to a survey. What that means is that we've had to read through about 14,000 written comments uh, and trying to just wrap our arms around. As you can imagine quite a few of those were uh, just congestion and the issues that people experience on 2100 South and telling us about uh, the issues that are out there. We've also uh, met a couple of times with a stakeholder group and gotten some really good insights from them. We're, we're, we've done a lot of brainstorming. I think we have somewhere in the neighborhood of about a hundred different ideas for what we could do with this roadway. And we're, we're now working through trying to narrow that down to something that we could actually pull off. Uh, we had a couple of focus groups and hopefully some of you on this call may have attended some of those focus groups. They were very um, helpful to us to understand community values and, and, and trade-offs as we look at this roadway. We're really going all out and trying to figure out what to do with this road. It's so important to, to everyone. Um, so our next step for this project is that we're working on concept development. It's our hope to take everything that we've heard, everything that we've learned, and boil it, boil it down into about three different alternatives that we can then evaluate and come back to the community and share with you and say, hey, this is the ideas that we've come up with. Here's the pros and cons and the trade-offs between all of them. Um, and so look look for that here in the next couple of months as we uh, as we roll that out. Finally, 1700 East is also slated for construction in 2025. We have not even started with 1700 East, but know that that is also on the docket at the very end of all this. Now, one thing I didn't put on the list is one of the CIP applications that um, this group put in last year and Landon led the charge on was a, uh, a crosswalk enhancement at Highland High across 1700 East that we're actually going to be able to get built next year. And so we're able to take that little part of the 17th East project and accelerate it and get it done sooner, all because of that CIP uh, application and that process. So it works and uh, just put a plug in for, it's a great way to get projects funded and, and completed within the area. And I think I've seen that, the, that this group has been very successful in making that happen. So kudos to everyone. That's all I had, Landon. Uh, hopefully that was good. And Happy to ask, answer any questions in the chat. Great, Lynn. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions for Lynn while he's on? Bruce got a question about knowing- Hey, the Lynn, can you stop sharing so I can see who's next to present? Yeah. I'm not that stop. smart. There we go. Done. Thank you. I see a question from, from Lori about wondering if there's a way to know the demographics of the people who want a bike lane. Um, are you referring to like their social economic or where they live or what are you after there, Lori? Cause we probably can slice and dice that thing a million different ways. Um, so, yeah. So I'm wondering if there are people who are more professional riders who are really accustomed to riding on busy streets. There's a couple professional riders in my building and I'm right on Monument Plaza, right on 21st South. None of us want a bike lane. <laughs> So that's why I'm wondering who did want that and how are you going to make those decisions? And if you ever do another focus group, I'd love to be on it because I'm, yeah. I'm there every day. Yeah, um, we tried to be pretty random about focus groups and I had no selection in it. We actually hired a third, an independent third party to put those together. Um, in terms of the level of um, comfort or experience riding a bike, we didn't ask about that. And so there wouldn't be a way for us to... Um, to, 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 you know, say, this is the demographic that wanted that. We, we did ask some basic demographic questions about, you know, age and right. I live, took, income I took status. The survey. I, I no. did take the survey. So those questions are things that we could slice and dice a little bit and, and dig into. Honestly, the survey is going to be incredibly helpful for us. And we, there's a lot of, I think the biggest takeaway for me so far, and we're still digesting it all, obviously, is that um, there are so many competing needs and interests on this roadway. And what's gonna be really hard is that now we have to figure out how to balance all of those. We don't have enough room to do everything. We really don't. And so we've just got to work through um, and, and we'll have options that have one thing in it and another option that doesn't. And we'll be evaluating all those things against each other. 
Um, and, and, you know, frankly, that's kind of the process that we follow to make these transportation decisions. And um, I think at the end of the day, I, I would guess that nobody's going to be really ecstatic about what we do. Um, but hopefully everybody can understand why we're doing what we do and, and why we got to where we did. So hopefully that's helpful. All right, thanks, Lynn. Thanks for always coming. How did he freeze? All right, Laura. Laura's sitting in for Amy Fowler tonight. Um, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, so coming up um, later this month, let's see, it's September 20th, um, the city council is going to be meeting. And they're going to be talking about the other side village. Um, so if you have any comments um, regarding the other side village, please come to the council meeting, whether it's by phone, by WebEx, or in person, or sending emails to um, Amy or myself. Um, please tell us what you are feeling about the other side village. Um, later, um, I don't know when it's scheduled, um, the city council will be voting on what to do with the other side village. Um, so that's all that Amy wanted me to share with you all tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, your background's amazing. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Um, yeah, we're cruising. Judy, do you have anything from land use? There's nothing going on for land use. Uh -huh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so they, there were several things brought up at the last planning commission meeting that were just conversations. I don't know the right word, conversations between staff and the planning commission. And they're um, starting to research the idea of making a change to allowing drive-through drive throughs in the Sugar House Business District. Now, part of it is staff time. I guess you could just say there won't be any, but when you look at the whole area from 17th South to the freeway and 7th East to 13th East, there's a lot of drive throughs that are outside that area. So when you start to cross into different zones, um, requires more staff time to figure it out because those zones exist in other places in the city. So it's not so cut and dry. And they're gonna talk about it again at their next meeting on the 14th. And it's not a high priority item, but I think everybody would like to see something done. We've got a second draft revision to the revision of the accessory dwelling unit ordinance. Um, that's been in place for three to four years. They've only built about 50 units, which is way fewer than they expected. They thought this would add to affordable housing. Not a single one of those units is affordable. And it takes a lot of staff time. So what they want to do is make these a permitted use, which means we would never see them again. And I always worry about that because things done by the permit counter, in my opinion, are just checking the boxes. They don't look at design or placement or things like that. So we'll see a final draft of whatever it is they're gonna vote on sometime soon. The Thriving in Place study uh, was the first report for the, the uh, new housing ordinances the city needs to put in place. I learned the reason is because the legislature has written two bills that require cities to have this, that, and the other thing in place in their ordinances, or they're not eligible for any transportation funds. So they've got us kind of over a barrel. And part of what's happening, the, the consultants are from Berkeley and Tim Thomas said, so of the 30 cities they've now reviewed, Salt Lake City's the worst. And by that, he means there is no affordable housing. 
most cities are, you know, in a spot and you can live in the suburbs around all around the city. With Salt Lake, we have south to Provo and north to Ogden. We don't have the west side, which is the lake, and the east side, which is the mountains. So that means people have to go further and further out of the core of the city to find affordable housing. So that's gonna be very interesting. I also learned, and, and Tim's not gonna to listen to this, that the city council, most of them have decided that this thriving in place group doesn't know what they're doing, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. The affordable housing incentive plan um, is still circulating among the emails. We haven't seen that back yet, but it's coming. And we do know that the proposal for a come and go where the Sizzler used to be will be at, on the Planning Commission at one of the meetings in October. We don't know which one. I'm told by staff that they've made some changes to their plans, but they're not major changes. And we won't know what those are. I've asked them to be on our next land use committee. So if you, meeting. So if you have questions you'd like them to answer, shoot me an email. And we'll make sure that we get them to answer all that. I think we mostly have concern. First of all, traffic is terrible. That's That uh, intersection has failed the last 15 years at least. So to add more in and out parking on that corner or traffic on that corner would be difficult. And the other thing is the retention pond underneath, you know, the sago lily and the draw. There's a big earthen dam underneath what is the parking lot for Sizzler. And if that gets damaged, that costs millions of federal dollars to put that in place. So I think that's one of our major concerns. The next land use meeting is September 19th at six o'clock. If you'd like to come, let me know. If you want to talk to these guys, it'd be via Zoom. And that's all I have for now. Thank you, Judy. Does anybody else have anything else? Brandon, the uh, one last plug. Come to the Oktoberfest Sunday, 1 to 5 p.m., the neighborhood hive. 2065 East, 2100 South. If you're a trustee, we expect a few of you to show up to volunteer. <laughs> Jeremy, one last plug on Highland High. Oh, he's doing something else. Yeah, no, I'm here. <laughs> come, to, come see Highland High. Uh, come, come to the meeting tomorrow, at seven in the Highland Live, uh, excuse me, Highland Auditorium uh, to check on the potential rebuild and to uh, get any questions and answer that you may have. Awesome, thank you. Hey, Pat, you wanna talk about Allen Park since we have a few minutes? Sure. Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. All right, so uh, Allen Park, I wasn't prepared to talk, Landon. I know, I know, I just saw you there. <laughs> um, well, the city just came in today and they did uh, some, they got about two trailers full of uh, uh, trees, branches, just dead stuff that's just been building up in there. They could say that, or they said they could spend another week. So um, we're hopefully going to get on their maintenance schedule and there will hopefully be some type of uh, interim plan drawn up with a few new um, city employees that White has been talking to. So um, the we are going to have a a uh, fall solstice um, volunteer day in the park um, on September 22nd. Uh, I believe it's from five to six. Uh, the uh, final time will be posted on our Friends of Allen Park Facebook webpage. Um, if anybody wants to come and uh, volunteer, we're basically just going to be just uh, picking up branches, just you know, cleaning up, uh, doing some invasive species weeding and just clear, clear, clearing the monument so when people come into the park, they can actually um, read Dr. Allen's uh, uh, poetry and uh, everything that he, 
he's installed in those monuments. Um, as far as uh, the wildlife, we have, uh, uh, there was a doe who gave birth to a fawn. So we have a new little Bambi down in Allen Park. Um, and it was kind of a cool, a cool thing. Um, the fawn's doing well and we have two bucks in the back of the park. One is a 10 point buck and there's a, also a, a five point or no, excuse me, five. It's a, it's a four point, a younger. Um, and we're just asking people to use caution when they are, are around the bucks because they do have antlers and they look really friendly and stuff, but we're just, we just try to keep our distance. Um, and as far as we had a peacock who was sick. Um, Ka, the oldest, um, I think uh, the Allen family called him the Colonel. Um, he uh, had a had an eye infection, so we secured a vet. Um, we got treatment, and I put eye drops in his eye, which was for about six, seven days, which was very difficult. But but we did it, and he's doing a lot better. So um, we're really happy to have a vet that we can call now if, if something does happen and we can get these animals um, care. So that was uh, very uh, unnerving yet uh, satis satisfying that he's that survived. Um, as far as there's no water from the front of the property uh, going to the you know, where the peacocks are in the big house area. That water line has been broken by the developers had trucks going over the water box up front oh. and it finally broke the, uh, the water. So we, Wida and I did get the water working on in the back and we've got two cisterns. Um, we can't fill the one in the front. Uh, so we're just bringing in water by hand for the peacocks. Um, so hopefully we can, uh, with this go bond, we can get some money so we can get the water fixed and we can have the, um, uh, the peacocks, you know, with, 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 with water we don't have to carry in. Um, as far as the animals are getting into the big house, um, there are raccoons that have uh, dug in through the wall um, in the back of the rooster house and the big house. Uh, and we're trying to mitigate that um, with some uh, uh, boards and just trying to, you know, make to seal that up. The tarp is missing on the roof. Um, and I, I think it was just a temporary fix and just wind picked it up. So um, it's probably not gonna ever rain again. So, you know, hopefully <laughs> that's the case, but um, I, I think public lands uh, knows that we're, we're concerned and, and they're gonna be doing something here soon about that. Um, the general condition of the park is really dry and um, it's a lot of the wildlife is kind of like moved up into the, the hills around the neighbors' homes. But um, in the, when it cools down, you'll, you'll probably see more of the animals and the birds come back into the park. So other than that, um, oh, security updates. We've had vandals come into the park and they've been breaking some windows. Um, we've had some unsheltered come in that we've been um, working with, um, breaking into some sheds behind some houses. And, and so we just bought locks and, we, and we've got those locked up. And um, Brooke is doing a wonderful job with security, with CBI, um, just helping to keep the park safe for everybody. And um, other than that, I can't think of anything that... Uh, that's going on that I, I, I need to share right now. But um, I look forward to uh, uh, when I have some written down presentation notes and everything that are not on the fly, I'll, I'll get those to you. And I, I look forward to speaking with you all then. Thank you. Pat, you nailed that. So thank you. Thank you. And everybody should check out Allen Park. It's an awesome place. Um, Bill Knowles wanted me to give a shout out to the guys that got 1700 East open before school started. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's on here, but that's a pretty big deal. So thank you. And I think meeting adjourned unless anybody else has anything. And welcome to the board, David. Glad to have you. But thanks for everybody attending tonight. And we'll see you next month. Bye. Thanks, Landon. Thanks, everyone.